transmission lines and more effort to solve okay and the results would be the same but if we use the the short transmission line model to model a long transmission line and we use an exact model to model the long transmission line the results would be different okay so that is why we have these different models now all these models they are based on uh, the theory of two port networks and all of you must have studied two port networks in which we have got a certain network which has got two terminals at the input and two terminals at the output okay and in the middle we have got a network and this network can be anything over here we are assuming this network to be our transmission line network if you are using a two port network in the context of circuit analysis then in the middle you would have some complex electrical circuit for which you got two terminals at the input and two terminals at the output now the way to uh, uh, describe this is that at the input terminals i have got the voltage as vs and the current which is going into the two port network is is and at the output i have got the voltage vr and the current that is leaving over here is ir now in the context of transmission line we call this two port network as the transmission network and in there vs is the voltage at the sending end is is the current at the sending end vr is the voltage at the receiving end and ir is the current at the receiving end and from our theory of two port network we have this that the voltage at the sending end is equal to a times vr plus b times ir where a and b are the parameters of this two port network okay and you have is which is the current at the sending end you have c times vr plus d times ir where c and d are again parameters of the two port network okay and what are these uh, parameters if your b is equal to sorry if you are let me write it you have vs which is equal to a vr plus b ir and is is equal to c times vr plus d times ir you can represent this two port network in the matrix form and you have vs and is and i have a b c d and you have vr and ir like this now these abcd parameters okay they are also known as transmission line line parameters abcd kya hai mere transmission line parameters and since we are dealing with ac quantities this abcd they would be they can also be complex numbers okay और वी एस और आई एस और वी आर और आई आर भी आपके पास एक फेजर फॉर्म में है और कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर है ओके ऑल्सो फ्रॉम सर्किट एनालिसिस यू नो दैट योर ए इज इक्वल टू वी एस ओवर वी आर वेन योर आई आर इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज द रेशियो ऑफ द इनपुट वोल्टेज टू द आउटपुट वोल्टेज वेन द आउटपुट इज ओपन सर्किटेड and what is b b is vs divided by ir when vr is equal to 0 ratio of the input voltage to the output current when the output is short circuited okay what about c c is is divided by vr when your ir is 0 and d is equal to is divided by ir when your vr is the output is short circuited 
Now, this is a per phase representation. We have only one phase to represent for our three phase transmission line. Okay. Now, <coughs> of course, if you this network, ko le, to usually at the output across the two terminals, you would have a certain load. Or input pe aapke pas, you would have a source of power and this is how it would flow through the line. Achha. What is the input complex power? S in it would be equal to V S I S conjugate. What is your S in ke bujaya isko mein kya deta hon S S and you have S R which is the complex power at the receiving end and it would be equal to V R I R conjugate okay and of course since we are dealing with phasor quantities this is P S plus J Q S and this is P R plus J Q R. So what will be the value of the power at the receiving end of the transmission line? V R I R cos of theta R. What would be the power at the sending end of the transmission line? V S I S cos of theta s where theta s is the phase angle at the between the voltage and the current at the sending end okay now bear in mind that this is your per phase equivalent circuit this is your per phase equivalent circuit what would be the actual power at the receiving end three times this what would be the actual power at the sending end three times of this thing okay. now <coughs> when we are modeling transmission lines okay I said that we have got electrical conductors. Electrical conductors are of different uh, diameters, different length, different material. Okay, so every conductor would have a certain impedance. Okay, if the length of the conductor is long, the impedance would be in proportion to the length. Similarly, when there are two conductors lying right next to each other, and current is flowing through the conductor, there would be a certain admittance between the two lines also and this admittance would change as the length of the line increases so we define some parameters okay and the first one is small z and small z is some r plus some j omega l okay and this is your impedance in ohms per unit length of the line okay this is ohms per unit length of the line and you can have the unit length to be a kilometer or you can have it as a meter it all depends on what level of accuracy you are interested in if the length of the line increases then that L would also increase. Similarly, your admittance Y is some G plus some J omega C and this is also in terms of Siemens per unit length. Now, this is the admittance between the two lines. Okay. And this is the impedance per unit length. Now, since we are interested in the entire transmission line, so we say that L is the 
length of the line now over here if your unit length is in kilometers this length of the line would also be in kilometers if the length is unit length is meters then your length would also be in meter now based on this capital Z is equal to small z multiplied by L and this capital Z is the total line impedance and it is lumped lumped means that the whole impedance is concentrated in just one value similarly you would have capital Y capital Y is small y multiplied by L and it is the total line admittance now we are assuming that we have this information available to us okay how do we have this information aapki line ki depending on the line properties parameters size of the conductor kitna uske andar se current ja raha hai kya hisab hai leakage fluxes kitne hain you can come up with these different values okay aur aapki book mein ek complete chapter hai is pe but for the purpose of the course we are assuming that this information is available to us okay now when we come to modeling of short transmission line okay our assumption is okay that the impedance of the line the total impedance of the line is lumped lump ka matlab kya hai ki wo sari ki sari ek jagah pe hai ab aapke paas short transmission line hai 60 kilometers ki 70 kilometers ki uski ek certain impedance hai ab ye to ho nahi sakta ki ji ek impedance hai जो कि सिंपली इससे रिप्रेजेंटेड है और वो लाइन के कहीं पे दरमियान में है और बाकी लाइन की कोई इंपिडेंस नहीं है इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल इफेक्टिवली अगर लाइन का एक मीटर का भी पीस है उसकी कुछ इंपिडेंस होगी अगला मीटर उसकी भी कुछ इंपिडेंस है जैसे जैसे आप आगे जाएंगे वो इंपिडेंस उसके अंदर एड हो रही है ना इफ वी से दैट द इम्पिडेंस इज लाइक दिस वी से दैट द इम्पिडेंस इज यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ओवर द line which is actually the case but for short transmission line we assume that it is lumped and we represent it with just some r and x now if we look at this thing okay this part over here is our two port network and in the two port network i have got an input and an output Okay. Now, if I write down the equations for this, this is my VR. Okay, the first thing is that your I S is equal to I R. Okay, and the other thing is that V S is equal to V R plus Z multiplied by I R. Okay. now i can write this as vs is equal to vr plus z ir and is is equal to ir i can give it a matrix form and i have vs is which is equal to 1 z 0 1 and you have V R I R. So you compare this with this thing. It is a two-port representation. Okay, and I have A is equal to D is equal to one, B is equal to Z, and C is equal to zero. These are the parameters of my two-port network. ठीक है दीज आर द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ माई टू पोर्ट नेटवर्क फॉर द शॉर्ट ट्रांसमिशन लाइन 